Okay, what's up, Wichita? This is Janice Thacker, and I'm here today with Mr. Curtis Bowen about career choices. Thank you, Janice, for inviting me in regards to career choices. I'm certainly uh, encouraged to be here and, and, and talk to you about that. Well, there's uh, sometimes students uh, haven't really decided if they want to go to college. Maybe they want to delay it, but they still need to have some career skills. Exactly, and that's exactly the path I took. I mean, I wasn't really a good student, so I didn't feel like I needed to go to college, but I was very good with my hands, so I was willing to, uh, to get into a trade as opposed to a, a college education. I even tried college. I started at Wichita State, only lasted six months, so then I went into a, a trade, an electrical trade. Okay, with well, being an electrician, how does that, do you have to go to school for that, or do you just pick it up from someone? How does that work? Well, as an electrician, you have uh, four years of school that you have to, training that you have to have, and believe me, you need the training because it's, it's not in a, it may be, it may seem easy to screw in a light bulb or something like that, but the point is, it takes a lot more than that. And uh, when I got into electricity, I was afraid to screw a light bulb in. I was really afraid of it, but it became easier each year that you were in your training. We had four years of training, and uh, we got a certificate after each one of those years. We got a license. We took a test and got a license after the fourth year. So you mean you're still studying like you're in school? At that time, uh, you, you really are. It, to uh, Somewhat, it's on a little different scale, but it's uh, you're getting paid for it. It's not like when you're in school. I mean, the, even when I was in the uh, school, in the apprenticeship program, I still was getting paid for that. Uh, I was indentured to a shop, an electrical shop, and they teach you and they just try to take baby steps and, and, and bring you along the way. And uh, after my fourth year, I was very comfortable in doing what I do, uh, what I did as an electrician. I was very comfortable in doing that after that fourth year. And I received my uh, uh, electrical license. Well, since we all like lights and we like electricity, is there a demand for electricians? Very much so. Very much so. And you may think that uh, the size of the city of Wichita is not necessarily a place for an electrician, but it most certainly is. Uh, when I was in school, we only had 93 master electricians. That's when you can uh, run your own shop. But now we have uh, upwards of 500 or more electricians that are in the city. And uh, electricity is always going to be used. I mean, we have LED lights, and we've done away with some of the... Uh, the other type of lighting, but we've gone on to some other technology in regards to electricity, and it's worked out very well. So an electrician is always needed, uh, uh, I mean, in your home or, or in commercial and or residential. Wow. So now that I know something about electricity, did you have any women kind of get involved in electricity? I did. Uh, it's funny you say that. We had a, a lady who was uh, did the very same thing. She went through all the training. And the women are just as good as men. I mean, what we do in electricity is really, it kind of leans towards them uh, a lot because it's not a lot of physical work. It, you, you do a lot of thinking, but it's not a lot of physical work. And women are very good at thinking. So uh, they, uh, they, uh, we had this lady who was a licensed electrician and it was, uh, she was very good at what she did. Uh, we had, I've seen one in the plumbing. I haven't seen any in heating and air. But uh, we had, uh, I actually trained, or she was under my leadership, uh, a lady electrician was. Well, should I ask you some other questions about other careers? We were talking about electricity, but, and I know that kind of led you to your own business, is that right? That's true. I was an electrician for, for uh, 20 years uh, after I got out of school. And then I went into, at the same time, being as I was around uh, housing and, and um, construction all the time, commercial, residential, and industrial, I was able to, I was able to actually um, go into getting uh, the building license. I got a builder's license. I mean, I, I've got a, I've had an electrical license since 1979, and I got a builder's license in 1982, and I've had it till this day. Uh, I've carried both of them. Uh, I always felt like I needed to be uh, the versatile. Because back then, we had a lot of ups and downs in the economy. And because of that, I felt like I, there was a real estate license I was going to get as well. But I, I kind of backed out of that because there was so much more schooling that uh, came along with it. So, uh, but I always wanted to be diverse, diversified. And I was. Uh, I actually was in electrical for 20 years. I got a building license in 1982. Uh, I worked in both of those fields uh, side by side. And then I had a, a, a 
little accident in the electrical field, which uh, caused me to go into the building uh, as a building inspector. I became a building inspector. So one really parlayed into the other. Uh, I called the city and I wasn't able to work because it was with my hands. And they said that they would like to have me uh, come up there because I had a license in two different fields, a building contractor and also electrical license. And then I became a combination inspector for the city. And then I worked as an inspector for 20 years for the city uh, based on starting in the trades as a licensed electrician. Well, so you, and now that you're kind of retired, you're still working. Yes, I, I really, <laughs> I really wouldn't call it retired. I would say that uh, I've kind of changed. They had a little buyout at the city, and I went along with that. Uh, and I thought if I was ever going to start my own business, this would be the time to do it. So I've kind of enjoyed that, uh, the, the pleasure of being able to uh, call the shots and be able to, uh, I, still, I still have training, though. That's an important part. I meant to mention that a little while ago. I still have CEU, it's called Continuing Education Classes. And those classes keep me informed on the trades that I'm involved in. Uh, we actually go and we get new, um, we get new um, uh, thoughts and points and, and even new uh, codes that are, that are uh, brought out in these uh, classes that we have. So we take a Continuing Education for the electrical, I take that for my building, uh, uh, license as well, a combination and building license. Uh, I'm a combination building inspector with a building license uh, as well. Building certification, correction, building certification for the city. And that, and this certifications that I have, the nice part about it, they're, they're working on a national, they're working on a national certification throughout the country. And it's called the ICC, International Code Council. That's what they're working on now. And when they, when they put this together, uh, they actually took three different areas of the country, which used to have three different types of inspection departments. And they tried to bring them all together, three people from each one of them, and they sit down, nine people sit down, and put together these international codes. So does that mean you can kind of go, it's easier to go someplace if you have a trade and get a job? Very much so. See, that's, what I'm, that's, that's a good point, because when I, if I leave here, I was looking at a job the other day, just in passing, and it was one in regards to in San Pueblo, uh, San Pablo, California. You can make $45 an hour. You know, their cost of living's a little higher out there. But once again, from when I started in this business in 1975 until today, it's never left me. I've always had uh, been able to take care of my family. I've always been able to uh, function uh, in a way that's uh, just as a middle class person. Once I became licensed, once I got the training that I needed uh, in these different fields. Wow, well see, being able to travel, have some kind of uh, security and knowing, having a trade, yeah. means you're meeting a lot of different people. I do, I've met a lot of different people, a lot of contractors. Uh, I've been asked to even go to Seattle with Boeing when they were putting their buildings together, the, the MPF building out there. I did all the electrical out there and the electrical management company wanted me to come along with them and they were going to pay me very well but I was kind of homesick for Wichita so I, <laughs> I stayed right here in Wichita. I very seldom travel but uh, as a union electrician I traveled some but uh, you can get in the union there just opens up so many opportunities when you uh, get in there get the training and uh, people they really uh, around the city now I, I'm respected in the sense that you do have the training you know what you're talking about uh, you've taken the test. They've been right there beside me. And uh, so I've, I've got a lot of good friends that are here in Wichita uh, based on all of my training that I've see, received. And the majority of it's here. One thing they do do, they, they allow us to go over to Denver and they have a, a class over there, an accelerated class that you can take to help you get your certifications or your licenses. So it, it, you just meet a lot of people in different parts of the city. And I'm, once again, uh, country, I'm sorry, different part of the country. And once again, all of these people all have electricity. They all have a need, no matter where you go. So I've, uh, I've been uh, all over the country and talked to people and uh, been made, had offers to go and work in some of these places as well. KGE wanted me to, uh, when it was KGE, they wanted me to teach a class uh, over there as well as my uh, electrical. They wanted me to teach a class. So if you get tied in to it, it's really a nice thing. I was going to say, with um, how young do you, do you interested in talking to students? How young can they be, or 
do they have to show an aptitude for working in this particular area? Well, yeah, the aptitude would probably be, I don't want to go to college. I mean, that's about all it amounts to, and then you got to do something. So why not get into a trade? And, and one of the trades, a plumbing, electrical, mechanical, and building, that's what I'm talking about. And uh, they even have welders, uh, pipe fitters. Uh, there's a lot more. You can go a little further than that, but they're all an offshoot of those four trades. And a lot of people that even some of the young ones that may you know, get into a lot of trouble. My, my, my problem was when I was in school, my attention pan, span wasn't that great. So that's why I probably would have never worked in college for me, but my attention span wasn't that good. So what I did when I went to apprenticeship school, it was a little easier and it's a little more relaxed too. You don't, It's more hands-on. Yeah, more hands-on, yeah. And, and if you're good with your hands, mm -hmm. you know, you're really good with your hands, it's a perfect field to be in any of the trades. I mean, if you have that aptitude. So a young person who's getting out of high school would do well to, to um, think about a trade because if they're not going to go to college, you have to have some means of, of, uh, of support for, your, for yourself and your family, whether you're married or not. It just works out so well uh, to, to go and get into a trade, get into a trade school. Butler County over here, they have a lot of classes for each one of these trades. And you go to that, you can get right in. Shops are looking for guys all the time uh, that uh, have been a part of, uh, especially the training process. They want you to be trained so nobody gets hurt. It's really important. Well, is there something that I didn't ask you that I should have asked you? Well, um, no, except the pay is pretty good. You didn't mention Oh, let's talk about else. money. <laughs> Being in, the, being in the trade is, is really good. Uh, uh, I'll go back to when you're in apprenticeship school, they, uh, when you're indentured to a shop and then they put you in the apprenticeship school, what they'll do is, as you gather so many hours in the trade, then they'll raise your wages. Every six months you get a raise. That's the beauty of being in a trade and going to the school, is that you get a good raise about twice a year. When you get out of class at the end of your four years, and it's moved up to five years, mm -hmm. five years now for uh, electrical. But when you get out of class, you will be the same pay grade as a journeyman electrician. And that's kind of nice, because you're learning, you're getting paid. OJT, remember the OJT? The yes, on the job training. Yes, on the okay. job training, that's <laughs> okay. what it is. You go to school in the evening, couple of three hours, the next day you're able to go and talk to your journeyman or talk to your supervisor and then they are able to answer any questions that you may have had that evening but then also you have a journeyman that you're working with and he'll be able to answer your questions right there on the spot when you're on the project. And uh, there's many, many projects around the city that could use apprentices. You're called an apprentice until you get out of school and once again your pay is relative to the time that you're in school, it just keeps going up and up and up. And next thing you know, you can never actually, once you get to the, to the elevation of a journeyman electrician, journeyman plumber, journeyman HVAC, your wages never go down. You never have to take any less than what a journeyman gets. And if you're in the union, it's just uh, a percentage higher. Uh, so you never have to make less than that. And I never have. I got my electrical license in 1979, and I've never made anything less from when I became a journeyman. I've always made more, and it's always gone up. Even as a building inspector, it, uh, and I've encouraged, I've even helped some guys. I've helped a couple of people with, uh, try to get their journeyman's license, their builder's license, when I was an inspector for the city. I'd help them get their builder's license as well. and. Uh, they have their builder's license, they get out there, you've been trained once again, you're tested thoroughly. Uh, it's a pretty pretty extensive test. And uh, you're, you're tested thoroughly, you get your license, uh, you get your insurance, then you're able to go out and work on your own and, and, and uh, uh, have your own business. So there's good money to be made in it. I encourage young ones to think about it. Uh, it would be a, a, nice, um, a nice way to make a living and then uh, once again, there's somebody who's always need one, all four of those trades, you need, somebody needs somebody in all four of those trades. Yes. Electrical, building, plumbing, and heating and air. You're always gonna be needed. So if you like being needed, then get into one of those trades. 
Uh, just say I wanted to do something on my house. Do I have to get a permit, or can I just fix my house like I want to? Well, it depends on what it is. It depends on what it is. You know, I'm asked that question a lot. Uh, even when I'm in Home Depot and sometimes over at Dillon's, they'll ask me, hey, I'm doing this to my house. Do I really need a permit for that? Well, there's things that you don't need a permit for, and there's things that you do need a permit for. And it depends on what you're doing. Uh, according to, and we have a residential code book, which is the IRC, Residential International Code, and we have a commercial code book. It's called the IBC, International Building Code, for commercial buildings. And in each one of them, there's areas in there, in each one of those types of buildings that you do not have to have a permit all the time. Oh, okay. Because I was going to have some cousins of mine, you know, put this room on the back of my house. And so I just wanted to know if I need the code, you know, if I need a permit or... Well, and, and the permit's there for a number of reasons, a number of reasons. It's, it's one of the first and foremost, Sedgwick County, that's how they tax you. Uh, when there's a permit pulled with the city of Wichita, it goes automatic, automatically into the county. Right, it goes into the county and then it's picked up from the county. It's picked up from the county and sent to the state that you now have an addition on your home. So when you put this addition on your home, that means you're living, and I'll just put it this way, living large. You're living a little better than you were before because you have more room. And now because you have more room, you've now uh, added to your lifestyle. So it, it causes you to raise So your, your taxes kind of go up. Yeah, exactly. It raises the taxes and the state keeps a, a, an eye on that. And you know, another part of a, a permit is it's for your benefit in a number of ways. Uh, again, it's for safety, for safety, because when you have a third party like myself or when I was working for the city come out and look at your property then and make sure that there's no life safety issues, then you can sleep well at night that your building is well taken care of. It's been looked at by somebody who's fair and impartial. That would be the city. And, they, uh, and you know that everything is safe. You don't have to worry about going to sleep and worrying about something going wrong there or something uh, happening to your new addition that you just put on. But then too, the other part of it is, in, in, you know how, if you notice in Wichita how nice the houses are all in a row, they set back just so far from the street, that's called a building setback. It's okay. a building setback. The building has to sit back so far in different neighborhoods. And because of that, because of that, we don't look like a third world country, do we? No, because, uh, and I've been overseas, so I know what you mean. Yeah, it's nothing against them, mm -hmm. but they don't have zoning rules. They don't have codes. Uh, they don't have individuals looking at them that are, that are licensed to look at them. Uh, they don't have a procedure in place. And that's why it, it just looks like there's helter skelter. And in essence, there really is. Here in our, our country, we don't do that. We have codes, we have rules we, that we follow. And um, because of that, when you drive down a street, we even have a landscaping. We have a code for landscaping. Uh, so you have certain trees that the city will plant in certain areas on, on thorough, uh, thoroughfares, um, main arteries in the city. Uh, those are all things put in place to make the city look nice. Not only in your home where you live, because we all want to live in a nice neighborhood, we all want our homes to look a certain way, and you don't want somebody next to you moving a trailer home in when it's not zoned for a trailer home. Nothing wrong with trailer homes, but they're zoning for different types of buildings, and if they're not zoned for that, then they shouldn't be there. Wow, so we talked kind of about um, if you had some questions about doing home repair, maybe you could give them some hints or tell them about how they put things together. You know, I, I was actually going to, I thought about uh, uh, modeling myself after a lawyer on the line. I was thinking about doing a, a uh, builder on the line, uh, maybe uh, to where I could answer those questions. Uh, this is something I thought about three or four years ago. I haven't uh, done anything with it. But I know there's a lot of questions out there and people have a lot of questions and, and I have a lot of answers. I don't mind giving them the answer straight from the code book. Uh, that way, uh, we're, not in, in, uh, uh, we're not going against any local codes or any local ordinances or laws. And uh, people feel better when they know what the law is and the way that I can build and what I can do that's gonna fall in line with, with uh, what the city requirements are. So yeah, I had, uh, there's a lot of questions that I still answer. I run into people at Home Depot and Dillon's and I still answer a lot of questions in regards to uh, the building uh, 
business, uh, and everybody's doing something on their own, putting roofs on and additions and, and uh, building the, uh, detached sheds and additions to their homes and things. So it's really, it's really kind of nice, and I've enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. That's why, do you say I was retired? I'm not really retired. I still, I still do this. I do it for individuals and, and contractors and, and building owners. Well, we'll have to have you back on when you can, maybe we can go on site and you can show us some of the typical questions that people ask about home improvement or fixing it up themselves. Be more than happy to do that. And I do, I know some contractors that would be willing to allow us to go out and take a quick look at them and, and uh, uh, kind of give you some pointers on some of the things that you might see if you were, even if you just went in and remodeled your home tore the sheetrock off the wall, there's certain specifications that you have to follow when you just do that. It doesn't always have to be new or an addition, but a lot of remodeling goes on. And uh, there's a lot of, uh, all four trades are involved. There's a lot of things that go with that. So yes, I'd be more than happy to come back on sometime and uh, maybe go out and do a, do, do a little spot out on, on a building somewhere, commercial and residential. I know some uh, building owners that'd be more than willing to allow us to do that. Okay, so we're signing off again, and this is JT Cascade Media Group at Outlook.com. Please join us again and find out about how you can uh, remodel your home, where you get your licenses from, and how to be safe. Very good. Thank you. Thank you.